No, kiddo. This moment. This is me. And my most masochistic. Bill? It's your baby. <laughs> Is Quentin Tarantino a feminist director or does he at least believe in representing women as complex individuals like their male counterparts in his movies? Well, I don't need to answer that. Fandor answered that question in his video essay. And I'm inclined to agree with him because Tarantino's chaotic world has well-rounded female characters that seem to have it equally unfair. The best of his feminist work came to be seen in his 2003 and 2004 masterpieces named Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2. But to understand why I think it's so good, we have to go back in time a little so that we can start understanding why and how Kill Bill is an important film for the image of the femme fatale and female action heroes. The first action movie that history remembers is A Great Train Robbery of 1903, which, as you might have guessed, did not have any women that inflicted violence. The 1910s of Christy Cobain the Wharton brothers and Orson, along with 1920s of Donald Crisp and Alan Dawn, had minimal to no content where a woman was capable of or was even seen inflicting violence. The Flash Gordon and Paradise Days of action movies in the 1930s introduced the cinematic world to the glamorous image that a woman could have in action cinema or play the damsel in distress. Let's fast forward to the first cemented movie roles for women in action movies that came through the Bond films. Since the first time Bond stories hit the silver screen with Dr. No in 1962, the image of the Bond girl was born and it limited the role of the woman to the damsel in distress that is to be won over by the man in control. Besides the sexual trophy narrative, the lack of capacity of violence in the relativity to the male lead has been a constant trend in the Bond films. Of course, things have gotten better since 1962, overall because we all got woke gradually, but the sexualization of the female hero hasn't stopped and given how conversation about reclaiming female sexuality is in our day and time, I don't know when or how it ever will. Meanwhile, the femme fatale image was being born in cinema. Just a decade after the bikini body image that the Bond had introduced to the world. Pop culture mostly dates Sigourney Weaver's Ripley as the first female action hero. Mostly because Ridley Scott's Aliens, the movie the character is from, had a very wide appeal and hence it has immortalized Ripley as the first popular female action hero. But she wasn't really. The 70s were popular for another niche of action movies and at the same time those were made in the East. 1973's Lady Snowblood is arguably the first and foremost female action hero and it is clear that Tarantino's entire project is a homage to the films in this era, if not this film in particular. The second big step for the female action hero was in 1974's introduction of Pam Greer as Foxy Brown, who also gets a tip of the hat from Tarantino in Jackie Brown. But the 1970s is really when a place for women as an action hero is carved out in the cinematic world. Things slowly started to get better and more and more complex, well-rounded, and individualistic female characters started showing up in movies. The 1980s were largely dominated by hyper-masculine men in action movies, but the 1990s showed La Femme Nikita and Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor in Terminator 2 The Judgment Day. And both those movies stood the test of time and are still big icons in the action heroes to this day. Alice from Underworld as well counts in this list. Though I think Linda Hamilton's Sarah Connor, as dubbed by the honest trailer guy as the Che Guevara of the Soccer Moms, has to have some parallels with Uma Thurman's Beatrix Kiddo, as besides being mothers, both of them come across as steadfast and stubborn along with relentlessly violent when necessary. Except Sarah Connor's a little crazy. Now, if you fast forward to the future, Charlie's Theron's Furiosa from Mad Max Fury Road comes very close to being the best female action hero in a very long time. But I'd still think Beatrix Kiddo serves as a much better symbol for the idea of the La Femme Fatale. From references to classics like Hattori Hanzo to The Game of Death to making the 70s kung fu style movie where you get the audience to care about the characters has to be worth its unique place in pop culture. 
Not only is Beatrix treated as a unique individual whose gender is irrelevant to how much violence she is capable of, but her motherhood is a big part of her identity throughout the film. Kill Bill achieves the goal of respecting the capacity and will of the individual irrespective of their gender and at the same time have them express and embrace their gender's identity altogether. While a mother is not all there to being a woman and is totally an option for those who don't have a child, I do think that only a woman is capable of being a mother in the context of seeing an offspring as a part of her body and I can't help but appreciate that a movie about samurai swords and Pai Mei's lessons in Kung Fu also manages to look at motherhood and femininity as a part of individual's identity.